Hi everyone. My name is Kara and I'm a dementia care coach with the Dementia Society of Ottawa and Renfrew County. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to take a few minutes to talk about how to make a schedule, what types of activities uh, you can do, and we'll talk about activities that you have in the home as well as activities that we have available at the Dementia Society. We'll also take some time to talk about how you can adapt an activity uh, that your loved one can do based on their current abilities. So first, I just wanted to take a minute to look at what you do in a day. So if we're looking at a caregiver preparing meals, shoveling the stairs, paying the bills, grocery shopping, taking out the garbage, recycling, compost, washing the laundry, folding the laundry, putting the laundry away, yard maintenance, washing the floors, cleaning the bathrooms, and that's probably just the beginning of it. Now, if we look at your fam friend or family member, what do they do in a day? Sleep, watch TV, go for a walk, but chances are there's not a lot more that's going on in the day. So I can imagine those two lists look a lot different. And if we think about how long some of the activities that the person you're caring for, how long of those, some of those activities take, and the fact that their attention span is already shortened, that probably leaves a lot of hours in the day with nothing to do. So while you're running around trying to get all these things done, your loved one might be bored or just doesn't know what to do. And oftentimes this boredom and uncertainty can lead to some challenging behaviors. Some of these behaviors can include wandering, agitation, uh, repetitive questioning, among others. And while these behaviors are not always related to boredom or uncertainty, it is common. So that brings us to planning activities and coming up with a schedule. So when we talk about activities, we often think that it has to mean leisure. But so that would be things like games, crossword puzzles, Sudoku. But the truth is almost any activity can be meaningful and purposeful. So there's this really great story um, that some of you may have heard before about Ronald Reagan when he was later in his dementia journey. Every morning he would go outside and rake the leaves. It was part of his routine, something he did every day, and it gave him a feeling of ha having accomplished something. To help with this, the staff every evening would put the leaves back out there so that he always had this part of his routine that he always did. So I think we can agree that raking leaves wouldn't be considered leisure, but at the same time, it gave him purpose and added meaning to his day. So if we look at someone who was a homemaker, for example, you know, one of the activities could be folding towels or folding shirts. For someone who worked in an office, it could be, you know, putting paper packages together or even filing papers, anything that'll make them feel a sense of accomplishment. So some questions to ask you know, when we're thinking about activities, what have they enjoyed in the past? What activities were they involved in, in past jobs, volunteer experiences, uh, home tasks? What types of roles or activities have they identified with in the past? So, you know, parent, school teacher, office manager. And then the next part of that is figuring out what activities the person can still do unassisted and if they can't do some of these activities, how can we adapt the activity? You know, what visual cues can be added? Uh, you know, written instructions, that kind of thing. So when we're looking at, say, household tasks that person could be in charge, in, in charge of, folding towels, you know, face cloths, dish cloths, that kind of thing, making the bed, emptying the dishwasher, sweeping the floors, clearing the table, you know, all of those things can 
can give them a sense of accomplishment and add meaning and purpose. Other activities that can be added that would be leisure activities, listening to music, going for a walk, playing cards, uh, sorting items, you know, that can mean sorting cards, sorting buttons, even sorting cutlery, you know, putting all the cutlery together and having them put it away properly. Surfing the internet, doing puzzles. So, and then looking at ways that activities can be adapted. Um, as an example, I had someone that I was working with many years ago who enjoyed playing rummy. So in the beginning, we played rummy the way, you know, the proper rules and the way that you play it. But as the dementia progressed, we started, we got to the point where the game was simply, you know, we still picked cards one at a time, but it was all we did was put the cards in order by suit you know, number the suits together, and it didn't matter. The point was this person was enjoying himself, and when they were all in order, he was proud that he had done that. So it's really kind of thinking outside the box and looking at ways that you can adapt adapt the game for, for their abilities. So now we'll just take a quick look at kind of an example schedule that we put together. So you don't want to overload it. You know, having a couple, I like to put a couple household uh, routine tasks. So it would be the same thing every day, but then mixing it up with some other things, you know. So if you look at the schedule that we put together here, Every morning, this person is responsible for setting the table for breakfast. So it's part of that routine, right? So they get up and it's clear what is the first thing to be done. And then every day, you know, having a different kind of uh, household activity, folding the laundry, you know, washing the dishes after breakfast, sweeping the kitchen floor, putting out the garbage or recycling, whatever it may be emptying the dishwasher, you know, and then I, we added folding laundry and it can be two different things every week, right? And, you know, and then adding other, other activities. So, you know, we've put in doing a word search, uh, doing a craft. Um, so MacTab called the make a connection, take a break, which Zoe is gonna talk about a little bit later. And going, so going for a walk, you know, every day after lunch, go for a walk or, you know, use one of the pedals that, that we can offer. Trivia questions. So when you're making the schedule, the first thing that I would do is put in the things that you know happen every, you know, every Friday you have a PSW that comes and helps with bathing or every Sunday evening, family comes for dinner, you know, or, you know, phone calls that are set, um, that kind of thing. And then looking at, you know, different activities, either virtual activities that are available that you know happen at certain times and dates. And, and then just, you know, I talked earlier about what the person would enjoy. And sometimes it's trial and error, you know, just, figuring out, okay, let's try this one. And it, it doesn't work, then you try something else. And trying to find activities, as I said, that, that the person can do on their own. And it might take some time to figure that out, but, you know, putting together, we have activity packages available that Zoe will also talk about, and that can be something that is out that you know the person can do on their own. And like I said, thinking outside the box, right? So looking at 
activity, like I was talking about with the, with the rummy game, you know, what can the person do? You know, we used to love playing crib or we used to love, you know, used to do crossword puzzles, but word searches, you know, it's still words. It's still that kind of thing. So maybe just switching it up a little bit. So now Zoe is going to talk to us a little bit about some of the activities that we have available uh, to loan out at the Dementia Society. Thanks so much, Kara. So my name is Zoe. I work with the programs team here at the Dementia Society of Ottawa and Renfrew County. And I'll be going over some of our programs that we offer that you can use in a schedule. So firstly, I'll be talking about the Make a Connection Take a Break program, otherwise known as MACTAB. Um, where we connect a volunteer with the person you're caring for or a person living with dementia. So I'll meet on a weekly basis or whatever currency you agree on um, and talk for about an hour. So right now we're doing uh, in person, or no, sorry, we're doing Zoom or phone visits or FaceTime visits. Uh, so it's great for an hour conversation. They can talk about, you'll kind of go over things with the volunteer that the person you're caring for likes, and they can bring that up in discussion. Uh, yeah, and talk for an hour. It's really nice. Uh, or we do our in-person visits soon. We'll be transitioning where the volunteer and uh, the person you're caring for can go for a walk, play a game outside, um, at least sit in the sun. So it's a great uh, program to add to a schedule because uh, you know that hour will be blocked off weekly. Um, yeah. So next I'll be talking about our Meaningful Activities program. So this program, uh, we just have a collection of activities that we loan out for use um, for the person you're caring for. So I'll go over some of the activities. So first we have our Pedal Power program, which is our most popular, uh, most popular item. So I'll show you how it works. So this is one of the pedals that we have. So it looks like this. Um, it, it will can be made smaller and then the other side goes up to um, so it's really easy for storing but you have the pedals here this is a tension knob so if you loosen it up it'll just make it a bit easier you can use it on your feet you can use it on your hands kind of like whatever you want to work and then um, you can make it tighter as you get better and it gets harder <laughs> and then here is a um, a tracker so you can track time you can track calories uh, so this is a great option when you're watching TV or when you're reading a book. Uh, and we also send a bunch of videos. So the kind of videos from all over the world. So you can feel like you're cycling um, all over the world, which is really fun. You can see something new. Next, I'll be talking about our activity packages. So our activity packages come uh, with a range of different items, mostly focused on brain health. So we have puzzles, matching games, crosswords. Um, there's some art items as well. We have some physical activity items, so we'll have like a ball toss. Uh, so I'll just show you one of the matching games. This is like one of many. Uh, so we have our little, it'll come with a bunch of different cards like this. Um, you can put on the table, and then you have your blocks here. So then you just match the block to the card. So there's a ton, a ton of different cards per each matching game. And there's a bunch of different range of topics for the matching games. So these are a great way to stay busy um, and keep the mind active. Um, we also have stories as well. So these stories will come with lar larger fonts and they're a bit shorter and they come with a range of different topics. So they are geared towards someone um, living with dementia. And next I'll talk about some of our newer items. So we have a companion animal which comes in cats and dogs, a couple different kinds of cats, but we have a lot of our black and white cats and uh, golden retrievers. So I'll show you how it works. So we have our cat here. Um, so it's quite big. And then you, at the bottom, there's a button to turn it on. So it can be turned on um, without sound or with sound. So I'll show you with sound. It's the cat. And if you pet it, it will respond to you. So it'll purr, it'll move. If you pet its head, it purrs. Um, so it does respond to your touch and they're really fluffy and really snuggly. So this is a great option for someone who had pets in the past, um, or just kind of likes texture as well. So it's a great, uh, it's a great item for someone who 
just wants to pet something and, and um, snuggle. So these are great. Next, uh, I'll show you our construction set. So our construction set is great for someone uh, that maybe worked in construction in the past or did labor or just enjoyed building things. So it comes with this little toolkit. You open it up um, and it's a whole range of tools. So they don't necessarily need to use the tools, but they are good for reminiscing. So maybe the, you know, the wrench will strike a memory and then you'll get onto a new topic. Um, so it's just great for conversation, but you can also use the items to build. There's a bunch of different little um, pockets for, um, you know, storing things, taking things in and out. You can build with these guys. Um, and the bright colors are great for differentiating the tools. And then next I'll be showing you um, an art item. So we have uh, a water drawing board is what it's called. So it is a... You can use for doodling, it's kind of like painting, but you do it all with water. So it's no mess. I'll show you how that works. So it comes in this little tablet computer style um, storing method. And then you have the pen here with water. And then you draw. And then as it dries, the canvas will clear. So you always have a new canvas. So this is great, it kind of gets you in a meditative state. Um, and it's great if you like to draw and, and practice. So this is a really fun item. Um, I really enjoy using this one as well. And then next, uh, lastly, I'll be showing uh, Bananagrams. So I don't know if this is going to go play Bananagrams. Uh, super fun games like Scrabble, but um, not as strict, not as in the box. But it'll come in this little banana package. And come in this plastic package as well. It's just a bunch of letters. So this is great for someone who loves reading, writing, uh, playing with words. And then you can just build letters. Um, you can also print a bunch of letters and the person can build the words using all these individual um, letters. So uh, yeah, it's a great, or build, or print sentences, print words, um, just print individual letters. And they can match, uh, match the letters. Or they can build, if they're earlier, on um, you can kind of play Scrabble or play Bananagrams so this will lead you to uh, an online their online website and they'll teach you how to play the game or you can always reach out to me and I can teach you how to play the game so it's a really fun and it's uh, very interactive so that's really fun so there's some of our activities we do have more coming um, we'll have babies coming for someone who you know had children in the past or has very maternal energy uh, or we have some more different companion animals that are more uh, for cuddling. Uh, and we have musical instruments for someone who's, who's into music. So those are just some of our activities. Um, and we can always talk more about it um, at the workshop. Uh, yeah, so if you have any questions, come prepared and we, we can discuss. All right, thanks, Kara. Thanks, Zoe. So that gives you kind of an overall view of, you know, what it means to write, a, to write up a schedule, have a routine, some activity ideas. Uh, if you want to take a look at the example routine, you'll find a link to it in the description of the video below. And please join me. I'll be doing a kind of a workshop on making a schedule and if you have specific questions, if you want other activity ideas, uh, you're welcome to join me. You can also speak to your dementia care coach who can help you figure out ideas as well. So thanks for joining me, everyone. Take care. Goodbye. If you want to learn more about the Dementia Society Meaningful Activity Programs, available products such as Pedal Power, Companion Animals, and Meaningful Activity Packages, visit the Dementia Society at myshopify.com.